really, really cool was kind of the use of cupcake liners. So, you know, like they said with the cupcake liner, the paper cupcake liners, or even the foil ones, that if you take a popsicle, like a popsicle, you know, like the ones that are on a stick or whatever, you kind of like to, you know, here's a popsicle and then here's a stick. You stick the stick through the bottom here. And so you hold the stick here and the popsicles out here. And so it keeps, for kids, it keeps the popsicle um, from dripping all over their hands because the cup catches the paper, Cup, the cupcake liner catches all of the, the drips from the popsicle, which I thought was really genius. Another thing that I um, read about was that, you know, they say that like when you're serving up ice cream, especially when you're serving it up to a crowd, that the hardest part of the part that takes the longest amount of time is the actual scooping into the bowls. And so that they had suggested that like you take cupcake liners like this and you pre-scoop all the ice cream, like a scoop into each one of the, these cupcake liners. And then you put them like in the, you know, your cup, in a cupcake, you know, pan or whatever like this or whatever some kind of tray um, and you put them in your freezer to keep them ready until people are ready to eat and literally then you just get the bowls and you just pop the ice cream out of the little um cupcake holders into the bowls and then you don't have to worry about like jamming that scooper in and getting you know the, and waiting for the ice cream to thaw so that you can scoop it all out so that's I thought that was a great tip if you're doing like some sort of ice cream bar or ice cream party um you know to kind of pre-prep them in the um cupcake liners um, another one that I thought was really kind of neat was that um, you can use like the cupcake tins that you bake your cupcakes in, which is burning my hands right now. I've been out in the sun for about two minutes and it's already burning my hands. You know, like these cupcake pans? You can take these cupcake pans and they have like all sorts of fun uses. Like one thing that I saw that was on here that I thought was kind of genius is that when you're having a party and you have hot dogs and hamburgers that you're grilling up on the grill, you can take this and instead of like having all the bottles of all the condiments and everything, you can put like ketchup in here, mustard in here, onions in here, pickles in here, relish, you know, all, like fill this with all of your condiments and you can just put it on your, you know, the, the table that you're sitting at to eat so people can dress their burgers or dogs sitting at the table as opposed to having like all those huge bottles and jars and stuff full of stuff so I thought that was pretty cool another thing that I thought was kind of cool about um this this cupcake tin do what we've got multiple purposes is that it can function as a drink tray so this is just your standard like red solo cup and if you could like they, they fit kind of perfectly in this is just a standard cupcake not a large one not a mini one just a they fit like right in here. So if you wanted to carry a number of them, you just, you know, put them all, you know, stack them all up in your thing and you can carry like, you know, six at a time out to your guests or whatever. If you want to pass out margaritas or if you want to pass out iced tea or lemonade or something like that, you can, you can pass it out from these cupcake holders, which I thought was pretty genius, right? Okay. So, um, another thing that I read about was, um, how to clean your grill, like ideas on how to clean your grill. And I guess like which I'm gonna to try to open up my grill cover. Oh, I can't, I don't know why, hold on. I think it's because my grill is stuck. Okay, bear with me people. So we take the grill, we're opening up the grill top and you know what happens when you look at your grill and you're like, oh my gosh, you don't wanna, you don't wanna cook on a grill top that's dirty and gross, right? So like mine's kind of dirty and gross. I don't know if you can see it, dirty and gross grill top, but apparently like you can take, tin foil and you can ball it up and you use the tin foil to clean your grill right which I thought was really cool alternatively if your grill top is really greasy and grimy they also suggest that you can take like you peel an onion like a just regular yellow onion and you half it and you stick a fork in the round side of the onion and the cut side of the onion you take over to your grill and you literally just kind of rub all over the grill right? Which I thought was really cool. You rub the onion all over the grill and apparently it has some like degreasing agents in it so that it will degrease your grill like quite easily. Just that, that half of an onion on a fork. How cool is that, right? So I thought that was another great tip. Tin foil and um, the half of an onion. Okay, so then I, I was reading here and they were saying that you can use, if you, get, if you cut a lemon in half, and you stuff on the outside part, like, you know, the, the rind. If you cut it, like, here's your lemon, right? And you cut it in half and you stick in the rind part, the cloves, that, that is a little spice, those little clove sticky things. You stick them in there. And I guess that can, if you put them out on your tables and stuff, it acts as like a bug repellent, which I thought was neat as opposed to using like chemicals like DEET and OFF and stuff. I don't know how effective it is. I've never done it myself, but you know, it's all natural. And I don't know how, like, I don't know how much area it will cover with its protection you know you might you know i i know that i'm so used to like citronella um lanterns or off or deet or whatever but like we're starting to get into high mosquito time and we're going to have some kind of wet weather this weekend so mosquitoes are probably going to be out in full force so that might be a good a good um 
trick. Um, what was another one that it was on here? Um, oh, oh, this is a good one. Okay. So I learned a way to quick chill. I mean, I know like everyone says wine at a barbecue. Heck yeah, you can, you'll see it tomorrow night. I'm going to be um, doing a wine pairing with like chips and dips, like, you know, your guacamole and your French cheese and, you know, cause wines go with everything. You can, I mean, if, I, if you can make, if we can pair wine with breakfast cereal, we can pair wine with anything, right folks? Okay. So I learned a way that you can rapid chill. A bottle of wine so if you like bring a bottle of wine over to a friend's house or something or someone brings you one and you want to serve a cold like a white or a rosé or something like that this is a great tip notice that the bottle is almost empty I'm a mom people I'm a mom people let's get real so um, what you do is you take your bottle of wine and you get a cloth just like a dishcloth like a regular old dishcloth or paper towels and you soak it in water it's cold water right and then you take the bottle and you wrap the bottle in the uh, wet towel and you put it in your refrigerator not your freezer put it in your refrigerator for seven minutes and in seven minutes you will have perfectly chilled wine right which I think is great because you don't want to put ice cubes I mean that's that's hillbilly when you put ice cubes in your wine but sometimes I mean you got to do what you got to do right when you got chill ice cubes you just use it what you got but you can also I've said this before you can also freeze fruit and use fruit as ice cubes instead of water ice cubes so that you don't dilute the wine or whatever but I thought that was this was a really great way to rapid chill a wine and you know you typically you don't have to chill reds you just have to chill whites and and pinks so to keep that I, I'm gonna definitely use that trick this week, as, as it's getting a little windy out here so I'm gonna definitely use that trick this week um, and what else was on my list here I, I'm sure you guys probably have some great ones what are your good ones I'm sure you have really awesome tips and tricks for the barbecue I and mean, probably stuff that has to do with kids I mean you know our kids are gonna be crazy running around probably with water balloons and um, you know they're gonna be tug of warring and three-legged racing and pool noodles and nerf guns and all that kind of stuff you know what kind of stuff uh, do you have kid hacks that you would use at this barbecue I'm trying to think of, I don't really have any kid hack ones but I mean these are all these are all equally important to keep parents hydrated while they're running after the kids on Memorial Day weekend or any other barbecue weekend for that matter um, I will say that there was some also some really in, good one about um, this is a weird one and I've never tried it maybe you guys have they say that like if you if you want like the moistest most tender well-cooked burger this is the first time I've ever heard of this that you build your patty and in the patty in the burger patty you put an ice cube and you kind of mold the patty, the, the ice cube into the burger patty, and then you grill it. Apparently that way it keeps your burger super, super moist um, and like flavorful and that, you know, they won't dry out that way. I've never tried that, but y'all, if you're grilling up burgers this weekend, try that for me, just even on one of them. Don't even have to do them all. Try it on one of them and see how it works out. I'm really curious to see how that works out because I thought that was really, really cool. Um, okay, so I think the one last hack I'm going to leave you with is this one. And it's it's about, um, for those of you that grill with propane, um, we grill with propane here. Um, and it's inevitable that we're going to want to like slow cook a big rack of ribs or something like that or a Boston butt. Like, you know, we're going to want to slow cook it on the grill. It's going to take hours to do, right? And then we realize we don't have enough propane. There's a way that you can test your tank safely to see what level of propane you have in the tank. Cause that's kind of hard to judge, right? So bear with me as I have to kind of carry this over there to the tank. Where are you, Mr. Tank? Our tank is under here. Okay. So bear with me cause I can barely see. Okay. Can you see the tank? Can you see me? You can see the tank, right? Where's the tank? Okay. So here's the tank. And what they say is to take the tank out, right? And then to like, tilt the tank on its side and obviously you don't want to connect it to any of the gas things and you don't want any of the valves open so you kind of tilt the tank on its side and then you not all the way but like you know at a 45 degree angle or whatever then you pour boiling water down the side of this and the area like and so then the, down the side of the the tank and you then afterwards you feel the tank to see where it's hot and where it's cold and where it's cold where the cold meets the hot is the level of where the propane ends so like if you poured the water down here like this and it was you know the hot boiling water and it was hot up here but right about here is where it started to get cold this is how high of propane you have in the tank i've never tried that either but apparently that's a way for you to tell quickly and accurately how much propane you have left in your tank so those are some of the ones that I have listed here. Um, and you know, you might have some others that I would love to hear about and I would love to hear other ones that you um, 
want to add. And I, like I said, I'm going to, I have a blog with a whole list of other ones that are on here that I will give you the link to. Um, but please comment, thumbs up, like, um, put in some of your tips and tricks so we can share them with others. And some other, I guess some kid ones are, here's, here's one. Do you know that you could do, like Doritos are technically flammable, like Doritos chips, and you can use them for wood kindling. So if you're one of those purists who actually use like wood chips or charcoal or something like that to grill, I guess that Doritos can act as a kindling if you're in a pinch. Who would have known? A bug just flew in my mouth. I'm taking one for the team. Another one is, is that you can make a poor man's margarita, which I think was a cool one. I haven't tried this, but this is how you do it. You take, um, it's like a, a pouch of Capri Sun. Remember Capri Suns? Yeah, but they still have them in the pouches, right? You get, it's called um, a Capri Sun and you get the tropical punch flavor and you kind of cut the top off, like right above where the hole is for the straw, you cut the top off and you kind of open the pouch a little bit and you pour in tequila and you squeeze in a lime and apparently you kind of shake it up and you can just drink it with the straw that comes with it. And apparently that's kind of like a poor man's margarita and it's supposed to taste pretty good. So if you want to go out to the store, buy yourself some tropical punch Capri Sun, a box of it. So you can give the real ones, to the, the, the non-alcoholic ones to the kitties and the alcoholic ones to the parents. That's a win-win, but I would recommend probably labeling because you don't want little Jimmy grabbing the wrong pouch. Right, right, right. So that's what I got for you guys today. Like I said, um, thanks for joining me. Please like, uh, heart, give me a heart, give me a thumbs up, give me uh, some suggestions. Please share this with your friends. Um, and please be safe this weekend while people might be traveling for the holiday. Um, and you know, drink responsibly and, and be safe and drive safe and everybody have safe travels. Um, Friday night, I will be doing another wine tasting as I do every Friday night. I'll be um, doing that one solo probably. And I am going to be doing um, sips and dips. So uh, look for details on that. It'll be five o'clock Eastern time on Friday night. We'll be doing wines paired with uh, a typical party dips that you would find at a picnic or and it will be doing um, wines with I believe guacamole and pimento cheese but if you have a favorite dip um, that you want me to try to pair with a wine I'd be happy to you know be up for the challenge so let me know you guys have a great day mom on and happy Memorial Day and we hope to see you on Friday